Hey, happy Memorial Day, everybody. I forced myself out. We're going to take a new route down to the hit me in the head with a golf ball rail yard. Uh, yeah, I, I went like four days without sleep. I just absolutely couldn't sleep. And then all of a sudden come Saturday, Saturday morning, good Lord, I ended up sleeping all the way to like four or something the next morning, all the way through uh, Sunday. And now Monday, I'm like, good Lord, talk about a complete 180. I think my body just collapsed. I didn't even try to sleep. I don't even remember sleeping. Uh, or trying to go to sleep it just kind of happened <laughs> kind of like if you ride a greyhound bus cross country you can't sleep when you finally get to where you're going you just fall out uh, yeah I got a couple of t-shirts I want to show you guys too down here I'm hoping there's some railroad cars down in the yard, but I don't see any silhouettes. Got to go under this overpass here. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's still too far to see. Being Memorial Day, uh, things may be a little slower. This is CSX. And they just run usually one GM train a day each direction. A couple of coal trains each way. That's about it. Yeah, I think this yard is empty. Well, I guess I could have walked down there and down, but I didn't know if that was big boulders under here or not. See if I can't get get myself hit in the head with a golf ball again. Alrighty, let's see. Alright, yeah. They moved all them other rail cars out. There could be some down on the other end. Let's see. That's uh, a little too curved. Yeah, it's about where I got hit by that golf ball. We'll take a walk down and see if we can't find anything neat, interesting to look to, look at. Yeah, this is extra large size. You can get it on the front or the back. I usually like my decals on the back, back of my shirt. And there's the other one. Yeah, extra large, and I think it comes in extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, all the way up to 3X. And that's it. Uh, shoestringarmy.com forward slash store. I'll put a link in the description below the video. I'll put a link to take you directly to it. And I think they'll be for sale, I think Jerry said, up until the 9th of june you have to to order but anyway uh looks like they did some work here too uh all that new upturned soil they just moved moved outward they could be planning on moving them yard tracks out a little further and then over yeah yeah i, I get a lot of request lately asking me about like uh, what's jail like and how often did I go to jail while riding uh, back when I first started riding I went to jail quite often and that was only because 
I didn't really know the ropes yet. I didn't know really where to hide out, what to do, what not to do. Like in the instance of Pensacola, Florida, that was the longest I ever did time in jail for riding. But there was an overpass, kind of like the one we just walked under. Me and some other kid, I was probably 20 years old then, some other kid decided to ride east to Jacksonville, Baldwin Yard, uh, together. So the train crew changed on the other end of the yard and got down to where we are, and I'm running after that. I think the kid said he had never ridden or only ridden a little. So that train come out about good 14, 15 miles an hour, and my God, I was booking it. Threw my water bottle up on there, running fast as I could. Finally got up and got my knees on that first wrong and uh, I could see that kid behind me running too but just then I heard uh, an intercom like the PA system they have on cop cars I heard uh, ah, ah, get off the train now ah, ah, boop, boop. so I looked and I don't know how I seen him then hell my eyes were perfect then <laughs> But, uh, so I, I let go of the ladder and walked over to him and thinking I'm just going to get, I mean, it's the city police. Wasn't no railroad bull or nothing. Big old big footer. He put me in handcuffs, slammed me against the hood of the car. He says, you do know why you're going to jail, don't you? I said, yeah. So... I don't know where the jail is now in Pensacola, but back then in 90, it was kind of downtown. It was like a multi-story jail. I want to say I was on the sixth floor, but I may be wrong. But, uh, yeah, that, and that was like a Friday, so I had to wait till Monday to go to court. And I remember the judge giving me 20 days it was a thousand dollar fine for trespass and if you ain't got the money for the ticket the city gives you fifty dollars a day towards your ticket your charge so i spent right at 20 days and they let me out at one minute after midnight that way they get paid for a full extra day by letting you spend one minute extra in it in jail I'm trying to get these rocks out from under me uh, and I didn't think I was gonna do 20 days I thought we was already over packed they even had cots that were stretched out against the wall over by the phone they gave me one of the cots of course the end of them didn't have the wooden rungs in them no it was straight up 20 days uh, I asked them, I'm like, they're giving me my property back. I was like, where's my backpack? They're like, oh, it's at the sheriff's office. I'm like, why, why, why is it there? You know, why don't y'all have it? Well, the city and county are different, something like that. So I had to wait till 8 a.m. the next morning to get my gear. And I want to say the shortest shortest time I ever spent in jail would have been New Orleans New Orleans Louisiana and Orleans Parish I'd gotten picked up caught on the box car and I could hear them over the radio talking about them being over overstuffed overpopulated and so we pulled right down to the jail and I heard over the radio, hey, what, what's, what are you bringing that guy in for? They said, uh, trespass. He goes, man, just get his address, write him a ticket. We ain't got no room in here. So I 
I had like uh, five minutes inside, so that was it. But you had to get all the way back out to the Gentilly or the Avondale yard, one of them. They're both about the same distance from downtown. I just remember that being a long walk. And I never spent much time in downtown New Orleans. I just never liked crowds. Hence the, hence the reason I rode freight trains to ride them. I just like to be really far away from people. Uh, yeah, whoo. Oh, that was a weird end of last week and weekend. My sleep being off like that. Four days and only had like two and a half hours of sleep. And then just was awake a little bit of the day, Saturday or Sunday. Slept all of that all through the night. So I, it's kind of weird. You start thinking, why am I awake? And then you start thinking, well, why am I sleeping so much? But anyway, so I think my plans now are to leave on the 16th to go to Duke. I have an appointment on the 17th. They got to do that uh, biopsy of my liver to see if, see if it's healthy enough. And you know what? That, that should be up to me, I think. Because what if they tell me, no, nah, your liver ain't healthy enough. Which, the doctor I already seen said she didn't, she already seen my lab work. Said she thinks that, she, that they'll be able to get me in. So, that's going to be a, another jump across the mountains. Yeah, I'd really love to get one of these automated switches to operate but since this one's only for going down into the yard here and there being uh, no traffic through here lately I doubt very serious today they'll be using it that is one heck of a winding in there that electric motor inside that Yeah, back up here to this little gate. Yeah, I imagine this is railroad only. Yeah, that's a railroad lock. There's a grocery store not too far from here. I'm going to go up and try to get some little knickknacks I need. You know, when you face something medical like this that I'm going through, it's amazing how all of a sudden you, I mean, if you really are wanting to live, you pull your, you know what, together. And you're just hoping to God that doing it this late is going to make a difference. So I am really trying to eat a lot better. Uh, so we'll go down and see what we can find. I kind of like it down here. It's real shrubby and not so darn hot almost like a jungle boy it was hot down in Mexico City and well Guadalajara wasn't too bad actually Guadalajara is like way over a mile high they're like as high as Cheyenne and Laramie they're over 7,000 foot elevation it actually snows in Guadalajara every now and then. But that was back in 92 when I could wear a darn fur coat and 108 degrees outside. And boy, now you get about 45 or 50. Boy, everything on earth starts bothering you. But yeah, I don't think there's much of a shoulder on going to the right. I might just go back down the way I come. Well, it looks like I just missed these coming in. Yeah, 
Okay, I figured I'd go to the store here after I'm done showing around the yard. I figured I was already out here in the area. Boy, I tell you, whew, out of shape. Body just don't want to do anything. Man. Just affects everything. Yeah, the uh, piston's not even out on him. That means he's got the hand brakes tied down on each end. I'm gonna have to, next big rainstorm we get, I'm gonna try to make it to where I can get inside a boxcar and uh, record that. That's an experience, especially a, a hailstorm, big hailstone falling while you're in a boxcar. Good Lord, you could hear that while you're rolling down the tracks. Let me know if anybody's seen any ticks yet this year. So far I've been lucky. Hadn't seen one single tick. Yeah, see, even though we call these grainers, most of them, a majority, I'd say 80% of these type cars don't haul grain. It's just easier to call them that. They haul this. These little bitty plastic pellets just billions and billions and hundreds of billions of them per car they're made at a plastics refinery then they're shipped off to manufacturers who press it or melt it back down into other products like throwaway cups silverware uh, toys hair brushes see how usually they're a little bit larger than this about twice as big these are kind of square too the others are mostly round yeah they've just used these since the last rain they've just parked these back in here yeah and these here are the seals once they load a uh, car up they'll come down here and put a seal around it that way it ensures that company that nothing's been tampered with and when they get it there to the person who bought it they'll just cut that seal off instead of throwing it on the ground or in the trash they just throw them up here to be taken away on the train if anybody's ever heard of operation clean sweep that came out like around 2000. Um, I'm just estimating there, give or take a couple of years. Operation Clean Sweep was where all of these companies agreed to clean up their mess like that. Leave boxcars without no cardboard or paper in them, trash. This one must have got the memo. I don't see too much garbage on them. Hmm, I knew I felt some cool air coming from somewhere. It's got that musty mildew smell too, so that could only mean one thing. Uh, there's got to be an opening to this building you know you get to an abandoned building and you can just smell the inside of it and the cool air coming from out of it Whoa. To want to fall through here, man. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, boy. Holy mackerel. Hmm. I gotta get in here safely first. Golly. Oh, oh. Some good mosquito back here. Man, what kind of building was it? Was this? I've never looked on maps, so there's something back there too. Poison oak or something. like an eclipse just slowly getting darker man I'm gonna have to remember this place the only thing is it's not a catch out it's like individual stalls that are identical with the piping and the tubing and plumbing. Uh, I wonder if it was yeah, some kind of loading dock, I guess. But it loaded here in the center, then went out to that yard, so I bet you big cave in there. I bet you they loaded meat or something. Paper. And these rails. They're, I've seen these big long carts that go over these and they, they slide back and forth like this. So I bet they went all the way out to the rail, that farthest railroad track, or closest rather. Well, look how old these trees are in the middle. That tells you how long this place has been shut down. Yeah, that tree is a good, God, at least 60 years old, you'd think. That just blew over, too. Hmm. Gotta be slow. I'm so drained of energy. It's like getting out of a hospital bed, taking off your taking out your IV and doing this. <laughs> yeah, there's look how big that tree is. That's one of them fast growing. Uh, it's not sumac, of course, but it's a plant sort of like it well imagine the copper in that that winding of that electric motor yeah I think that's a sleeping bag I think would be no way I as much sleepwalking as I've, I've been doing lately get up at night and fall through that ah. Yeah, I used to rarely, rarely ever sleepwalk. And the only time I did is when I was like, had a bacterial infection. Some, that makes you have them vivid dreams too. Now, for some reason, the last year and a half, sleepwalking a, a few times. 
but get this surgery over man i'm gonna god i can't wait to get back riding holy mackerel well there's poison and everything back here I've, I've been lucky though i've i've never really broke out or had an itch from poison ivy or poison oak Yeah, that building, I zoomed up, it actually did show up. It's called Harris Warehousing. Harris, like Harris County, Texas, Houston. Warehousing. Yeah, when I first seen what these were used for, I couldn't believe it. But they haul railroad nails in here. Railroad spikes. Yep, all these flow over box cars. They'll eventually use these when they become in demand. Yep, summer's finally here. trying to get over but oh here's the open one that's kind of rare to see down here god look at the rust there's them cardboard mat load locks load protectors but a lot of people ask me hey sistering what's the hardest railroad car to catch on the fly and that would be your box car see there's nowhere no ladder to step up on like they do in the show in the movies that don't exist anywhere and there's really no wrong sticking out well, I just grab with one hand. This this, this handle will always be here, but it's kind of harder on them plug doors. But you got a tube you can grab on to. But I don't get them on the fly when they're moving anymore. I'm just talking about like it is now, getting up in there. Yeah, these been here quite a while. Rusted to the track. You can see where they bumped them around a few times. That spot there is where the axle was sitting. And it rained and it rusted. Here's that open box. I thought that was lights. Looks like lights. Hello! Huff and puff and blow your warehouse down. Hmm, I don't know what that stuff is. Pre made, prefabbed walls or buildings. Huh. Their way scale. Ah, no way I can make it move. That reads in the thousands of pounds there. 